Hey everybody, it's Pastor Wildy. One of the hardest questions that people bring in to their pastors is this. Why is there so much evil in the world? Why do bad things happen, Pastor? And actually the answer is really simple. Even though it might not leave us feeling very satisfied, the answer to that question is sin. Sin is the reason there's bad in the world. Sin is the reason there's evil in the world. When we look out and see people suffering, it's because of sin. When we look out and see sickness and sadness and death, it's because of sin. This has been true ever since Adam and Eve first sinned by eating from the tree that God told them not to eat from. Ever since then, bad things have been happening. And it's a result of sin. And the really scary thing about bad things happening is the devil loves to use them. He sees that bad things happen because of sin and he wants to use those bad things to drive us further away from God who loves us. He wants us to give up on God and say, well, God, if you love me so much and you let this bad thing happen, I don't like you, God. Or he wants us to think, well, if this bad thing happens, there must be no such thing as God. He must not exist. We know that's not true. But that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to use bad things in our lives to make us give up on God, give up on each other, give up on ourselves, lose all hope and just give in to trying to protect ourselves at whatever cost. But there's good news. Because even though bad things happen in the world and even though bad things happening are a result of the worst thing, sin being in the world, God even uses bad things for our good. And here's how. When the devil wants to use a bad thing in your life to turn you away from God, to make you give up and lose hope, God uses that bad thing in your life to turn you towards him, to realize you need him, to turn towards him and look for hope and love, and then you find it there. That's what believers do when we face hard things in life, when we see evil in life. Instead of turning away from God, we cling to God. We hold on to him. We, we grab onto God and say, God, we need you because we can't survive all these bad things on our own. There's a really good example of a believer doing just that in God's word. His name was Job, and maybe you know his story. He was a relatively wealthy man. He believed in God and loved God, and, and he had a lot of blessings from God as well. He was a farmer and had lots of camels and sheep and herds, and he had a, a lot of children as well, ten kids. And God allowed some really bad things to happen to him. All his wealth was stolen, and his house was lost, and his children all died. And even though all of those unimaginably bad things happened, Job didn't run away from God. Even though the devil wanted Job to run away from God, even though the devil used Job's friends and even his wife to say, just give up on God, Job didn't because he trusted in God. And he knew that even if the only good thing left for him was to die and go to heaven, he still wasn't going to give up on God. I'm going to read to you from Job chapter 7. This is Job praying to God and describing how sad his life is. But look, he's praying to God. He's not giving up on God. Even though he thinks the only good outcome for him, the only relief from his sorrow and pain is, is death. We read Job chapter 7, beginning with verse 1. Does not a man have hard service on earth? Are not his days like those of a hired man, like a slave longing for the evening shadows, or a hired man waiting eagerly for his wages? So I have been allotted months of futility, and nights of misery have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, how long before I get up? The night drags on, and I toss till dawn. My body is clothed with worms and scabs. My skin is broken and festering. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember, O oh God, that my life is but a breath. My eyes will never see happiness again. Can you hear Job's pain? He's not a happy guy. He had suffered things that maybe we can't even imagine, or maybe you can imagine suffering things that terrible. Either way, he didn't give up his faith because he knew that even though the most terrible things were happening in his life, he had a God who loved him and promised him good things in eternity. And when we face hard things in life, that's where we want to look to. Instead of giving in to the devil's temptation to give up, or to hate God, or to turn away from God. When you face hard things, turn towards him, just like Job did. If Job did, you can too, because Job did it not by his own strength, not because Job was anything special. He was just a believer. 
like you and me. And believers have God's power, and God works through us to turn us to himself, even using bad things for our good. We're going to talk more about this in church on Sunday. God makes that promise that he's going to use all things for the good of those who love him. God bless us as we trust in that promise, despite what our minds and our friends and the world might tell us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, you are our Savior, and you're enough for us. You've blessed us with forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life in heaven. You even promised that all the bad things that happen to us in life will work out for our good somehow, even if we can't see that. Help us to be like Job, who, even though he thought the only way out of all his suffering was his own death and going to heaven, still trusted in you. Help us to have that same kind of steadfast faith in you as we face our own hardships. And as we face our own hardships, give us the comfort of knowing that you still love us, you're still with us, and you'll be with us through the end and work those things for our good, because you love us. We pray in your name. Amen.